there. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all my subscribers for their help and support and the advice I've received has been absolutely fantastic. Um, secondly, I've just received my ticket for the North of England Woodworking and Power Tool Show um, to be held in Harrogate in November. Now I went to this show last year and it was great. They had um, loads of demonstrations on and loads of different suppliers uh, so I can't wait to go there this year it was brilliant uh, while on the subject of power tools uh, a good few years ago I bought this Bosch professional uh, drill it's a 14.4 volt drill and it's still going strong and I always promised myself that if the newer model the 18 volt one was reduced in price I'd, I'd buy one and recently Screwfix reduced this in price from I think it was at least £120 down to just under £100 and uh, it's the 18 volt model comes with two, uh, two amp hour batteries I like the smaller batteries because you can get into tighter spaces and, and they are a, a bit lighter than the uh, 4 amp hour ones so that's brilliant um, 3 year guarantee on the body and uh, 2 year guarantee on the battery and finally, um, I'm a regular reader of Wood Turning Magazine and this month there was an article um, <clears throat> about a guy called um, Michael Alguire and uh, he, he produces some fantastic objects and one of the things he does is uses um, a basket weave technique and <clears throat> the items he produces just look like baskets and it just got me totally intrigued in terms of how he, he would go about producing something like that. So I did a bit of research on the internet and I came across a couple of guys. I, th I think the original person who developed this technique was a guy called David Nittman. Could be wrong. Um, but I also came across um, a channel of a guy called uh, Harvey Mayer and he goes through this basket weave technique in great amount of detail so it's really inspired me to have a go and um, I did a bit of a trial and produced that so now I've decided to have a go at making a small platter and apply that basket weave technique so fingers crossed it'll work out okay um, I'll get back to you in a bit so this is a piece of sycamore which is two inches deep and about six inches in diameter so I'm going to have a go at um, making a basket weave platter Okay, so um, I was just about to start making some beads along here, um, however I think I've got a problem straight away because I've put this dovetail in here and that's um, about an eighth of an inch deep and the walls of the platter are actually going to be about a quarter of an inch. Um, so that actually means that the base of the bowl is going to be very very shallow. So straight away I think I've got to rethink this and I think I've got to put a tenon on here okay so hopefully I'm back on track now so this is um, an Ashley Isles beading tool and it's an eighth of an inch uh, beading tool now from the videos I've seen 
the advice is to put 316 speed here and then do eighths along here. And I've not got a 316 speeding tool, so I'm going to have to sort of improvise on that edge. Uh, but I'll start beading round about there and move in. So see how we get on. Make some initial marks first of all. So now I need to burn the inside of these beads. So I've got some uh, paper backed sandpaper. So we'll give that a try. If you need a fairly high speed, probably it's running at 1700 revs. Depth up to the tenon is about one and a half inches, so I'm going to um, drill a depth hole of one and a quarter because I want it to be a quarter of an inch thick all round. Okay, so I've uh, hollowed out the side here to round about 5 sixteenths. I've left some stock in there to provide some support at the moment and now I'll uh, create some beads. Okay, so I've cut all the beads and now it's a matter of uh, burning in the insides. 
Okay, so that's the burning complete, and now on to the next phase of marking out. So the uh, next step is to make a, a simple jig, so just a piece of wood screwed to another piece of wood on the uh, lathe bed, um, so this can move around, and a hole drilled in so we can put a pencil through to mark the exact position of the centre of the headstock. So this lathe has got 36 indexing points so that's every 10 degrees. And what I'm going to do is to put marks on every 5 degrees. So first of all I'll go around 36 times and then I'll do a slight adjustment and then do it 36 times again. So I just mark mark That's the next thing, next point. Okay, so I've done the first 36 lines, and now what I've done is uh, put a little fibre washer behind the chuck, um, just to offset it a little bit, so I can put lines 32 36 lines now between the other lines, if that makes sense. So that will just go there between the two. And that's the fibre washer. Okay, so that's the uh, 72 lines drawn on, front and back, and now what I need to do is to burn these lines in using a pyro pyrography tool. Now my tool is a Peter Childs, and when I tried it on the test piece, I just used a fine tip, which um, didn't really come out great. It was a bit blotchy in places, quite difficult to keep a sort of a straight and consistent line. So looking online, I came across a company called Razor Tip. I think they're uh, a Canadian company or a, a, an American company. And they do um, a tip which is really suited for this type of work. It's um, a little beading tip around about an eighth of an inch and it's spot on really to do these beads um, however having got it and read um, the Peter Charles manual it suggests that uh, unless you use um, tips of a, made out of a specific type of wire and gauge then putting a tip like this on might blow the machine so I'm reluctant to use it, which is a real shame because that tip is spot on. So what I've done 
um, is after many attempts I've actually made um, a little tip which is pretty much um, an eighth of an inch um, semicircle, not quite a semicircle. But I've done a test burn here and it actually seems to work quite well. So um, now I need to go around all these and burn them in. So I'll just show you the first bit and uh, then I'll get back to you with the completed piece. So my unit is on about half temperature and I'll just double check it on here. Oops. So I'll continue with the piece and I'll get back to you later. Okay so that's the pyrography bit done on the uh, top of the platter and uh, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with the outside edge so I've left that for the moment I uh, need to give it a bit of thought but uh, so far I'm very happy with that. So before going any further I thought I ought to come up with some kind of a design so um, I've downloaded this graph paper it's called polar graph paper so if you search for that you'll find various sites I'll put a link uh, to the site that I've used to generate this graph paper basically you put in various parameters you know the number of radial lines that you've got the um, distance between these lines that are going out and it ge just generates the paper that you uh, that you want so um, having done that I then put a pattern in here, by no stretch of the imagination I'm an artist, um, so I've come up with this uh, design here. I thought about that but I've discarded that so I'll be producing that on here. So having done that, um, I've decided to leave this outside edge natural, so I've sandpapered out the radial lines that I put in previously. thousand five hundred and eighty four so this is the colouring phase and um, I've bought some of these uh, Faber Castell colouring pens um, which are apparently the best type of pens to carry out this type of work um, so I've got um, two different pen nib types I've got a an S which is very fine and a B which is uh, like a soft tip I use the soft tip more than the, uh, the fine at the moment um, so I've got three different colours we've got sanguine dark sepia and black and I've decided I'm going to go with that pattern and not that pattern so we'll give it a try So I'll carry on and I'll get back to you. Well so far this has taken many hours over several days and it's an absolute marathon. So this is using the thicker pen. What I generally do is to mark out just put a dot on each one of them first to try and avoid any mistakes and then
a lot easier holding it in my hand. I'm just trying to show you the method really. Once I've done the majority on each of the beads with this thicker tip, I'll then use this finer tip to go into the edges, which is quite difficult. And if you make any mistakes, you can use a little craft knife to scrape away the ink. Well, that was definitely the most labour intensive project I've taken on to date. Um, so what have I learned? Um, first of all, it's extremely labour intensive. Um, secondly, if you can get a purpose made pyrography bit, I mean mine was a homemade one, which did work and gave a consistent sort of pattern, uh, but ideally you want a purpose made one. Um, thirdly, the Faber Castell pens were superb. Uh, and I'll definitely use those in, in future projects. I think if I was to try it again on beads, I'd try and get a really, really extra fine tip if they do them. I don't know whether they do, uh, but that's what, what, I, what I would look out for. Um, the other thing is, oh, my Ashley Isles uh, beading tool, um, which is there. It's brilliant. Um, it's the first time I've used it in anger on a piece. This is one eighth of an inch, and uh, I did try and get a hold of um, a three sixteenths, but actually ours were out of stock on those. So I hope to pick one up at the Harrogate um, show in November. So um, the piece. Now I did um, put some finish on it, so I um, put some acrylic sanding sealer on it and then I finished it with some acrylic satin lacquer and I couldn't believe it um, it went cloudy on the base and I think they call it, it the term is blooming and I think it's got something to do with the atmosphere I think if, um, if you spray and the atmosphere is damp I think it condenses on top and then goes sort of like a whitish cloudy colour. Um, so that was a nightmare. All the work I put into the bottom and then it went cloudy. So anyway, I've managed to sort that out after a bit of uh, investigation on the internet and uh, this is the piece and to be honest I'm absolutely delighted with it. Um, it's brilliant and uh, it will take pride of place uh, somewhere in the house. Hope you like it. Thank you.